All right, hello everyone, and welcome to Storytime Art. My name is Tyler, and welcome to uh, my home studio here today. Um, today, we are gonna learn how to make a couple neat little paintings that look something like these. So you see here, I've got a little landscape with a big, big sky, and I've got a, a tree painting with some grass and things like that. We're gonna make these paintings, but we're not gonna use paint. In fact, we're gonna make our very own paint today out of some dried out markers. So I'm sure you have these lying around, uh, some markers that have lost their caps and they've dried out and they're no good for drawing anymore, right? Like I'm gonna try and, well, actually that one works really well. So I'm gonna keep that one, but this one, yes, look at that, doesn't work, no good, right? But I'm gonna keep it and with that, I'm going to make all kinds of cool paint that we can use. Okay, you can see I've got a couple different colors there. All right, so the first thing that you need to do to make your paint is you need a cup or a jar with a little bit of water in it. Maybe about that much, maybe a little bit less. Depends how much paint you want to make and how thick you want it to be. So I'm gonna put a little, uh, I've got some water there and I'm gonna take the marker that didn't work. Uh, I've got a few others here. I've separated out a few and I've, I've organized them by color. So these are mostly sort of pink ones and I'm gonna stick it in there and watch what happens. You can see it happen almost right away. I'm gonna swirl them around a little bit, just like that. And look at that. Now I'm almost already getting some sort of nice pink paint. And if you let that sit for a day or two, it's gonna go nice and dark just like that. Pretty amazing. Although you can use this almost right away. I'm gonna leave it over here um, for it to sort of uh, soak a little bit. So that's a handy, handy way that you can reuse old dried out markers. And now I'm gonna show you how we are going to paint with that stuff. So I'm gonna tilt the camera down a little bit so you can see my little workspace here. Um, here is my paper. I'm gonna put it, my marker testing paper, I'm gonna put it over there. <clears throat> so what you're gonna need uh, as far as materials go is you're gonna need your paint that you've made. I just leave my markers soaking in there um, so that I get a nice rich color. Um, you'll need paint brushes. If you have them, I have uh, a nice thin one, I have some thicker ones, I have some stiff ones. If you don't have paint brushes, don't worry. Um, a sponge or a couple of sponges will do just fine. So what I've done, uh, I have a few sponges here and I can show you, you can make your very own paint brushes with this stuff. So I'm going to cut my sponge. See, I've got like a little triangle sort of shape there. This one, I'm gonna leave it mostly big, but I'm gonna cut it in half this way. So I'm gonna leave, so now I've got a nice, a nice big one. So I've got that sponge, I've got my little tiny sponge. Um, <clears throat> maybe I'll leave this one as this shape. And then this one, I'm also gonna cut it maybe medium sized. So I'm gonna cut it in half again, and I'm gonna cut a point at the end. This stuff is really easy to cut. Kind of looks like a little house. Um, but if your hands are really small and you want some help, please feel free to ask someone for some help. I am gonna save the rest of these sponge bits in case I need to make more little paintbrushes later. And I'm gonna put the rest of them over there. You can use these just with your fingers um, or you can use uh, like a bamboo skewer or a little toothpick. Sort of jam it in there and give it a little twist. And just like that, you've made your very own little paintbrush. Okay, so I'm gonna put those over here. Uh, what else do you need? Maybe some tape if you want, um, a pencil to draw your picture first. Um, I got my scissors that I use to make my sponge. Oh, you will need some clean water. So this cup is just for clean water, not for any markers to go in. That's for cleaning my brush. And you'll need some paper. Um, something to paint on. So I have, uh, so this is some heavy 
heavy watercolor painter uh, paper. This is some heavy watercolor paper uh, that I'm going to use. And you can also use some white cardboard that I have here. Let's see, I can, can see I practice on that side. Um, or you can get some, some regular cardboard or even a piece of wood uh, and just sort of paint it white. Um, you know, with regular house paint even, uh, or something like that. You can just paint it white. So today I am going to use uh, the heavy paper and the white cardboard, one for each. You can also use like heavy cardstock if you have it. The printer paper, it might work. You can try it out, um, but it's too flimsy. It, it's pretty flimsy, so it might sort of um, bend and buckle and get all like a big old mess. So, what I have done for the paper is I have taped it down to this board so it stays nice and flat, stays put, uh, and the water doesn't make it sort of like bend and bubble uh, all over the place. And what I have done here, uh, this one can just sort of stay as it is. Now, I'm going to start by drawing my picture out. Um, I'm going to use a marker for this one. Um, you can use pencil, but I'm going to use marker so that you can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to start by doing my tree. I'm going to do sort of the hill that it sits on, maybe kind of like that. Maybe there's another little hill back there. And then for my tree, I'm going to do a wobbly sort of curvy tree. You can do whatever kind of tree you like. Maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker. And I get to do nice big branches. Kind of coming off like this. That's your tree. You can decide how many big or little branches you want. You can you can put some little grass nubs at the bottom there. However you want to do that. Maybe if you want, you can even do a little tree back here. Notice how I'm just drawing the leaves, or sorry, I'm just drawing the uh, the trunk and the branches. I'm not drawing anything else. I'm going to do the, the leaves and the grass in with the, with the paint. Now I'm going to move over here and I'm going to draw a nice straight-ish line going across like that. I'm going to do some mountains, maybe a little mountain there, a nice little mountain kind of back there like that. And I'm going to draw in some big old clouds. So normally I would be drawing this with pencil first because then I can sort of erase my pencil lines, but I'm doing it with a marker so that you can see it a little bit better. So the pencil doesn't always pick up on the camera. So there I've got my two little sketches, my two little drawings, and I'm going to do both of them kind of at the same time. All right, so I'm going to start with my tree, so I'm going to put this over here. Now with the little brush. I grab my green. I actually have two greens here. I'm going to maybe go back and forth between each one. I'm going to keep this little piece of paper over here off to the side. That's going to be my tester. So I'm going to dip my brush in the, in, the, in the first green. And I'm going to dab it on my scrap piece of paper first. Oh yeah, that's a perfect green. So I want to make sure I've got the right green that I, that I want. And for my tree, I'm going to start sort of dabbing in little dots of green. Just here and there, not too much, leaving some white space. Just kind of going around. Just a little here and there, just little sprinkles, little dots, little dabs. Maybe on this one, do a little bit too. Okay, and I'm going to leave that to dry for now. I am going to put more leaves in it later, but I want my first sort of layer to dry first. Now I'm going to use my larger brush. Uh, actually, with this one might be good to use a sponge. So let's try that out. I'm going to put my sponge right in there, try and soak up some of that green. And you can sort of drag it across like a paintbrush, or you can sort of sponge it and, and sort of stamp it on. You get a nice, a nice sort of spongy texture. Or you can sort of wipe it across like, like a like a paintbrush.
and there we go. So that's the first part of that painting. It's not finished, not at all. I'm gonna put it down here to dry though for a little bit and move over to this one. Now what I'm gonna do is, let's see, now that I've, I've still got green on my brush, so I'm gonna use that green, paint my sort of grassy area here. I want my green to be a little bit of a different green, so I'm gonna clean my brush Maybe get a little bit of this yellow. Mix that in. There we go. Now I've got kind of a different green, which is cool. And that's all going to kind of blend together as it's drying. Now I'm going to move on to the sky. So I've got my blue. Cleaned off my brush. Get some blue paint in there. And I don't have any white paint because I don't have white markers. So to do the clouds and things like that, instead of painting with white paint that I do not have, I'm gonna paint around them with my brush. So I'm gonna paint the sky and everything around my nice white clouds, almost like, you know, when you're, when you're, uh, when you're coloring in a coloring book and you're coloring inside the lines and you're supposed to, you know, stay inside the lines, but now I am coloring outside the lines completely just like that there we go a nice big thick brush can cover big areas really quickly which is nice uh, but if you want to be sort of slow and careful with it you can use a smaller brush as well there we go so I might want that to be a little bit of a darker blue later. Um, so I'm going to show you in a minute how to make that darker. So I'm going to put that aside again. Move these out of the way. Clean off my brush. And now I'm going to go back to my tree painting, which is mostly almost dry. Going back to my small brush, I'm going to use the different green. Adding in a few more little drops and dabs here with the two different kinds of green. There we go. Maybe I'll also add in some yellow to get a little bit of a different color going in there. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. Adding some yellow to my green makes my green change a little bit. Quite like that. Oh, I forgot to paint in the tree trunk. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to use purple for the tree trunk. I have brown, but I'm going to use purple for this because I like purple. It's one of my favorite colors. You know, it's your it's your tree, right? You can make it whatever color you would like to. There we go. And there you have it. So there's my, uh, oh, maybe I'll do a little more on the grass. Add a little more, a little more color to that. And there's a quick version of my sort of my little tree painting. You can add more things that you want. Maybe a, you can put a little person in there or like a house. You can do the sky. I think I'm going to leave mine just the way it is. For now uh, and I'm gonna skip back over to my mountain painting now this is started to dry out which is pretty nice I'm gonna do purple mountains for this so I'm gonna start painting in here and again I don't have white paint so what I'm gonna do for my little mountain caps is if I want snow to be at the top of the mountain I'm just gonna not paint where I want there to be snow just like that. Here we go. And there you have it. So maybe now that I'm done my mountains, my grass has dried 
Maybe I'll use some of the brown here and I will paint in maybe a little, oops, a little fence. Kind of like that. Uh, I should have waited for that to dry a little bit longer. And here you can see on my finished one, I painted a little, uh, a little fence uh, and there's a little barn in there. So there you have it. I have my little paintings here uh, that you can all you need to all you need for for that to do is some markers and some water. That's all you need.